Well, Mr. Pope, welcome to the studio. So happy to have you. A lot of people know you as a digital media specialist for all Shelby County schools, but not a lot of people know that you used to be a history and marketing teacher. So how in the world did you end up in the career that you are in now? Uh, so as a history teacher, first of all, I went, went to college, obviously, to become a history teacher and mm -hmm. um, enjoyed my time as a history teacher, but realized that that just wasn't what I, I love to do, um, uh, was yeah. to teach history specifically. Mm -hmm. But I did love to teach, and I loved working with students. Um, we did a lot of project-based learning then, and so yeah. got the opportunity uh, at Oak Grove High School to teach marketing. And uh, while teaching marketing, I fell in love with creating the video and photos that we were doing there. Uh, we sort of used it as a marketing apparatus for the school at large. Um, yeah. Uh, so we marketed, you know, sporting events. We marketed um, uh, theater performances, uh, band. I mean, anything and everything that was going on at the school. And uh, and so that's that's sort of how I got started in doing that kind of stuff, and then uh, just learned it and and loved it. Yeah, and I know I was talking with you before, but like your dad seemed to play a major role in getting you to kind of where you're at now, or not a major role, but like a major inspiration. Oh, so. definitely. I mean, I think, so I, I was saying earlier, I grew up with a dad, like I think a lot of people do, that had a camera in hand a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and his, uh, his setup was definitely a little bit different than what I run around with now. Um, but, uh, but he, he was, you know, at birthday parties at, you know, family vacations at, Christmas, he always had his camcorder. Yeah. And, and, was and it was like, you said it was like kind of connected to like yeah. a so, DVD player, basically, <laughs> you're carrying around. Not, not quite a DVD. So the old school was you had a camera uh, that you sort of held onto in your hand, uh, and then it had a cable that ran out of it into a VH, VHS player or, or um, recorder. And so it, this was the same thing that you know, I guess a few minutes ago was sitting on top of our TV that we would actually watch movies on. Uh, but then he yeah. would take that, put it in a bag, hang it on his shoulder, and video us at Christmas opening our presents and stuff. So, Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, we've still got, uh, matter of fact, my dad has converted those to DVD and even digital form, other digital forms uh, since then. So uh, we've got all those old cassettes. My mom's usually giving him uh, an angry oh. expression yeah, or something like, oh. as, as he's videoing her or uh, videoing me with my speech impediment that I had at the time. Probably. Yeah, like, so, get me off this camera. Please. Yeah, no, so, no, I loved the camera back then mm -hmm. uh, as a kid. My sister and I both, we, we never shot away from it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I guess, and like, you love the camera now, too, because you got your own YouTube channel. Mm. Uh, that's a, that's a... Um, uh, maybe maybe out of necessity that I use the camera now. <laughs> yeah. Um, for that, but uh, but yeah, I don't I don't mind being on camera. I mean, it's it's not mm -hmm. one of those things that uh, that I love to do. On my YouTube channel, I'm, I've tried being like just a, the YouTuber yeah. and talking to the camera. That did not go very well. <laughs> and, uh, You're like I don't like yeah, it very yeah, much. Yeah, <laughs> there's still some out there, but. Uh, but yeah, I, I I enjoy this kind of stuff. I enjoy conversations. I enjoy uh, yeah. just talking, and and so that's what my my YouTube channel is now. It's Became like a podcast, like a podcast. Exactly. creating creators podcast, that's right? Yep. And then you get to meet with creators all over Birmingham yeah. and Central Alabama. Do you have any like unique stories from that, or like unique people? I mean, really, to be honest, they're all amazing, and and I tell people all the time, I'm shocked people say yes. You know, I mean, it's just yeah. some. 40 year old well over 40 now uh, <laughs> over 40 year old bald man contacting them randomly usually through instagram dms or something and saying yeah. hey would love to have you on my podcast Just networking uh, yeah and and early on i mean it was initially it was people that i already knew yeah uh, but quickly those people were pointing me in directions to people that i didn't know mm -hmm. and uh and that was really neat and uh and now I ran into a guy the other day at, at Starbucks and like he recognized me. Oh, um, he's that's he's awesome. one that's uh, that's been to uh, been been to some of our meetups we've done as well as you know he's watched the podcast. So it was exactly. it was neat. And then your wife also played a good role in getting you to where you're at now. And yeah. you met her at 16 and went on a date at your 16th birthday. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, that day I had to go. That's crazy. I had to go get my license that morning. If I didn't pass the test. I wouldn't be able to go on the date that night oh, with my wife. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was pivotal. Fate in the hands of the driver's license test. <laughs> yeah, yeah the gracious. DMV was controlling our future. <laughs> like sweating, like, oh, no, I got to get this girl. Yeah, yeah back, I think it's gracious. different now. I mean, most of y'all, I think, take your driver's test with your, like, driver's ed teacher, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so back then... You couldn't do that. You you took driver's ed, but but we we went to the DMV, uh, and and had to pass a test with somebody we had never met before. That's over there with a checklist, oh ready to gosh. just like tear you up. Did they have the up. brake too? Like no, I don't think I, no no. Oh. They, you drove your own car, so whatever car you oh, got okay. there in, you drove that as the test. But they're in the passenger seat, just marking off, and we had to. Parallel park. I don't think oh, you have yeah. to parallel park. Oh, gosh. That would be a terrible <laughs> job to do. Just imagine hopping in the car with a kid that has no clue what they're doing and going on the interstate. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so it <laughs> was going to be doing that. It was a stressful, stressful morning, but a very happy oh, ending. So my wife awesome. and I went on our date that in evening. Uh, I did miss the exit for getting on 65. So we, we ended up, anyway, so I, 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 I yeah, had to learn my way around. around. Yeah, <laughs> you're like extra time. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. Probably the yeah. bigger question. I did that on question. purpose. Yeah. I did that on purpose. <laughs> Probably. I just wanted those extra twenty minutes. <laughs> I think. I think the bigger question is who would let their daughter go on a date with a 16 year old that just got his license that <laughs> True. morning? Gosh. So. But. You must have been a pretty cool guy. So, <laughs> <laughs> Her parents must have been like, you got to go. You got to risk it. You got to yeah. risk it for the biscuit. Goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also know you have two twins, not two twins, two. I have, I have four kids. Two girls. I have, yeah, but one two of, of which, yeah, yeah, two are twins. Yeah. That's awesome. I bet they give you trouble sometimes. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that on, on this. No. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're students yeah. in Shelby County. They would probably oh, yeah. prefer probably me like, not yeah. to talk bad about them. No, what the heck? Yeah, yeah. I have, I'm very fortunate to have great kids and, uh, um, all four of them are very, very, uh, very good in school. And <laughs> You're like, I got to yeah. watch how yeah. I'm talking right now. <laughs> <laughs> they make great decisions and they make me proud. So definitely. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. They take after their mother a lot. Well, um, coming back to your job, and I know you said in one of your podcasts that you prefer to be a fly on the wall when photographing like different events that's going on in the school. What do you think like not being noticed plays a role into how authentic your videos or your photographs turn out yeah that's a good question i would say i would say part of it is is um i don't, I don't want to i don't want to take away from what's going on in a classroom mm -hmm. or at an event uh, but I, I, I primarily think of it in a classroom and it's it's hard i mean you walk into a room especially if you're in like a, an elementary school classroom it's pretty hard not to be an immediate distraction Noticed. you know yeah and so uh but, but there are ways that you can be less of one. Um, mm -hmm. I think using the right lens is a big thing. Um, I primarily use like an 85 millimeter lens or a 35 millimeter lens. Yeah. Um, and so an 85 millimeter lens is gonna give me a lot um, closer vantage point without being in their face. Um, so oftentimes I'll, I'll utilize that. Uh, the good thing is I've got experience of being in the classroom myself as a teacher. And so mm -hmm. um, being in there doesn't intimidate me. Yeah. Being around students don't intimidate me. I've seen people that do get intimidated. Yeah, by being like, in oh, those, no, yeah, these yeah. high school kids are going to judge me so hard. Yeah, yeah, I'm used yeah. to that. They, uh, they've been judging me for a long time. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I bet like um, – not growing up, but like being a um, history and marketing teacher has allowed you to reach those like different connections with those students. So now you know how to kind of operate within their environment Definitely. and kind of like pick out, oh, like this student might give me a little bit of trouble, but this student looks like a lot of fun and we could actually get something out of that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's helped me also in being able to relate to the teachers because uh, we mm -hmm. do a lot of interviews uh, with oh, really? the kind of videos that we do. And so um, if I sit down and I, and I'm talking to somebody that I don't know their world, that's a really difficult place to be in. But yeah. if you're if you're sitting down with somebody that I've walked in your shoes, like I know what it feels like to n not be able to go to the bathroom in between classes. <laughs> exactly. Like it's little things like that that you can relate to yeah. that I think is really helpful in my job. 
That's so you awesome. like to make connections from your past experiences with the people that you interview? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's with, that's with the, the work I do for Shelby County Schools and also the, the podcast that I do. I think, you know, we've got, there's always a common denominator, common experience that we can sort of build on, you know, whether it's working in the video space or creative industry in general, or whether that's being a teacher in the classroom. So I think that that helps connect. You yeah. know, right off the bat. Right off the bat, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. What's kind of like your philosophy for uh, promoting and sharing other people's stories? Like, do you follow any kind of like guidelines for, ooh, let's get this, but let's not put that in? Yeah. Well, y'all have got a really great slogan, right, that, uh, that yes. uh, Oak Mountain Media uses. Every person has, has a story, story and every story matters. Uh, I mean, I would say there's definitely similar kind of feel for the stuff that I get to do. Um, Mm -hmm. the the big thing is whenever we talk about teachers te teaching is not an easy job you know it, it's very challenging but also extremely rewarding yeah um and and there's incredible connections that have been made um i, I think I've, I've responded to an email that you sent me recently and i was saying that um basically I get to tell the story of of whether it's teachers or custodians yes. or bus drivers or lunchroom ladies. These are people that literally are changing their communities every day. They're yeah. shaping and molding the uh, the very fabric of the community that they live in. Um, those are incredible stories to tell. And yeah. uh, and there's kids that will they'll cry talking about their teacher. And there's teachers. Oh my god. There are also <laughs> teachers that will cry talking about their students. You yeah. know? And, and uh, I've seen bus drivers uh, that uh, there's one bus driver in Calera. His was just a really incredible story. Um, he was uh, was actually diagnosed with cancer and was was literally dying of cancer at the time whenever we interviewed him. And, uh, and he told me at one point, I'm asking him questions like, is this job what you thought it would be? Yeah. Cause he had gotten su support person of the year for his school. And, uh, and he, he looked at me and he said, you know, I thought I was just going to be a bus driver, but he said, I, or I, he said, I thought I was just going to drive a bus, but he's like, I, I tie shoes. I, I, I do hair. I help, you know, put on backpacks and, and I mean, it was just all this stuff. And it was like, it was it was amazing to hear him say that, but also knowing where he was in his life and what yeah. he was going through. And then he ended with saying, I just wish I had more time with them. And he, he meant that in the sense of having more time with them than just the little bit of a bus ride. Yeah. But also at the same time, knowing that, you know, he, he wanted to be able to keep doing this longer, but his sickness was not going to allow that. So it was, uh, that was a great story and, and a great person. Um, he did pass away uh, uh, shortly after that. Oh, so, there's yeah. just so much that like people don't see. And I yeah. love that you get to interview people. Like, So people are going to interview the teacher of the year, the best teacher in the school, but they're not going to think about interviewing like the custodians or, or the, the people that driver. really, the people that yeah. really just shape the school. So I just love that you go out there and just interview people and get their story out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, imagine, the environment of the school and take all the people out of it right mm -hmm. i mean if you, you ever been in this place whenever it's empty it's so weird it is it's weird it, it doesn't feel comfortable it's not welcoming uh i mean it's it's a it's an <laughs> institutional building i mean it's there's there's brick or cinder block walls none of that just feels extremely welcoming yeah but the people in this building make it welcoming especially the teachers the custodians the, the office staff, the lunchroom mm -hmm. staff, like those are the people that that uh, that keep it going. But at the same time, they're they're the ones that welcome you in exactly. each day. So and I feel like um, like all of those people that work here and even like sometimes even students get overlooked in the aspect of like when these parents send their kids off to school, like they are sending them off to a community, like a village that's gonna help raise their kid. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. a kid needs to be raised by a village and this is the village where the, like people are being lifted up. So I think it's so important, like the atmosphere that we foster here, you know, so. 
Yeah. With the type of people that we have or we hire and stuff like that. Yeah. And Shelby County is so relational. Uh, yeah. I've seen with leadership, um, whether it's at the school level or the or even the district level. Um, it's amazing to see people like Dr. Brooks. That's something I get to do a lot is I get to um, we do like a podcast with Dr. Brooks called one on one with Dr. Brooks. And we get to go in and uh, he interviews students a lot of times, most of the time. And uh, seeing him already having relationships with students where they know each other already, um, and then him uh, being able to connect with them, whether it's through a sport or whether it's through a club or organization or just an achievement that they've made, yeah. um, that kind of stuff's really cool too. I mean, that's something I, again, like we were talking about earlier, I get to tell some really cool stories. Um, and, uh, and I get to see things that, uh, through my lens, that um, I think otherwise w wouldn't be, those stories wouldn't be told. Those uh, scenes yeah. wouldn't be seen if it wasn't for um, the, the opportunity that I've got to do what I do. Exactly, and that's awesome. You get to go to so many schools and see so many stories. And just, I bet like environment school to school is so different. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And yeah. just being able to see that and then also being like grateful for like, certain like you know school districts so yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> we've exhausted but, all questions no. <laughs> yeah. well what advice would you give to all people wanting to enter into media whether oh, wow. they're yeah I the always, history teacher or the student yeah i always i always ask this on my podcast like what really? advice would you have for yeah. people that want um so one thing, one thing I've always said, this was something I would say in the classroom, especially in my marketing classrooms, um, I would always say that uh, find something that you love to do and do it. Mm -hmm. Regardless of whether you get paid for it, regardless of whether it's ever going to bring you any kind of monetary uh, you know, success, just find something you love to do and go and do it. If possible, make money doing it, but <laughs> yeah. do it still. Does that make yeah. sense? Like, yeah. um, that's the thing I am. I feel like with video is um, I love doing video. I, I mean, I, if, if you go back to like my very early Instagram on my personal account, it's it's video of my kids with an iPad. I was I mean, I've got one where it's my daughter, do, my youngest Piper. She's uh, she's on the trampoline and uh she's just running around i think we've got a sprinkler under under the trampoline and uh and i'm videoing her with the ipad and it it looks incredible the lighting is incredible uh i had no talent whatsoever I mean, it's an <laughs> ipad you don't you don't yeah. i didn't even have manual controls on the ipad you know <laughs> so um but it's such a great video but it, like i would still be doing that stuff i would still be videoing my kids last night i was at my son's football game videoing him like i'm oh. going to video yeah. Regardless of whether I get paid for it or not, because I love doing it. Because it's your passion. Thankfully, I can I can make some money to do <laughs> yeah. it. So, yeah, it's always uh, good when you can make a little yeah. bit of money. But the podcast is like that for me. My mm -hmm. podcast, I I have made no money. I have spent money on my podcast, um, but I'm gonna keep doing it because I love doing it. Although exactly. I do, I have one guy I'm talking with that might Ooh. sponsor it. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if if possible, make money. Y'all gotta it. watch out. <laughs> He's coming on the rise. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for coming in and talking with us about all of this. This is just really cool to be able to hear your story and hear how you promote other people's stories. Like, it's just really awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Oak Mountain Media, I think, is uh, doing some really cool stuff. I love to see uh, the space sort of transform over the years. I love to see the, uh, the videos and productions that are coming out of it. Uh, John Milton is doing an incredible job. I think uh, more than anything, I see like real leadership rising up in, yeah. in this program. It's very uh, student led, which I appreciate. Yeah, yeah. Well, y'all are all doing a great job. So yeah. thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it was so great having you in. <laughs>